Hey guys, what's up? It's Crowded9 here with a discussion video about the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. Um, before we begin the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, you can use my TCG affiliate link down below if you would like. But let's go ahead straight into the video and discuss um, Mr. Bardish over here. So he is a 2100 Dark Warrior Link 3 monster, in which you do need 2 plus Dark Monsters to make them. Uh, during your main phase, you can send 1 the Phantom Knight monster from your deck to the graveyard, then set 1 Phantom Knight spell or trap card directly from your deck to the spell and trap card zone. If a Dark XE monster is special summoned to a zone this card points to, while this card is on the field except for damage step, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. And you can only use each effect of the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish once per turn. And one thing you need to remember is that this cannot be used from Link material. Um, whatever you make from him, you know, he's a Link 3, he can't be made into a Link 2, 3, or 4. That's it, he's just stuck on the board, unless you get rid of him and then revive him back, but even then, Cannot link with him at all. That's it. End of story. Your link climbing end with Bardish. So, let's talk about in context of when this was a good card. Uh, it was a different format. Orcus was more of an engine than a deck. People played one Harp Horror to you know one Skeleton to Nightmares, um, the the field card, the trap card, two Galateas, one Dingirisu, uh, one Bardish, and Mermaid was the biggest problem. Um, the reason why this card was really powerful during that time is because any two cards, as long as your hand was okay, uh, led into a full Orchid board, and then you can also play the Phantom Knights engine, which was a 4 to 5 cards depending on the build you were playing, and you just got all this free, you know, all this free, I guess, board presence just off of two cards uh, and a discard. And that was kind of the problem at the time, is that Mermaid just allowed all these really strong plays to just go through and this was one of them this was part of that whole play now the only downside is that right now um it's not as strong i know it's still a really strong card in concept but the problem is the decks that are going to be playing it if anything uh orcus could run it technically but i don't think they're going to be wanting to run five main deck essentially bricks to them because they're not really going to benefit from the phantom knight uh, phantom knight cards that well the whole problem with orcus right now is that they can barely get their whole deck rolling uh, let alone them trying to figure out what are they going to do with five extra cards in the main deck that doesn't really help them out all the time. Uh, Bardish is still a strong card, don't get me wrong. I think overall it's still incredibly great, especially with Dingirisu, the combination of you getting to pop something and sending something, eh, that's really good. Now, the downside still is the fact, like, that's three dark monsters you need, or two plus. Uh, Orcas, like I said, could play it, they don't benefit as heavily as they used to. BA is probably going to be the only deck that's going to be able to utilize it to its fullest capabilities, but I don't see BA becoming a very tier 1 deck anytime soon, because the whole other problem with this is that you're getting a lot of value on your turn, but on your opponent's turn, what is Bardish doing? BA is not going to be special summoning a lot of XZs. I mean, there, there's a way to do it with the rank up spell that um, Phantom Knights have, but that's not end all be all, and that's not doing everything the deck needs to have it done for. Uh, on top of that, you're just kind of just sticking a monster on board that you can't really do much else with, and him himself isn't providing you enough value. Now, Pendulum I think is going to be the deck that would be able to utilize this the best, but they're also sitting in a really weird place where it's like, what are they really going to accomplish with the board state that they're in? The problem with Pendulum is the same thing with um, Orcus. They can get the ball rolling, kind of, but they're more glass cannony, they don't do enough, and they're not as consistent as things like Emancipators and Eldritch. Now, on that topic, those tier with one decks are not going to be playing this. Um, Emancipators, Eldritch, uh, Dragon Link, these three decks are not going to be playing this engine. They could if they wanted to, but it's not benefiting them enough just for the rank up spell when most of them can just make these things alone without really needing that. And that's another topic of discussion, is the rank up magic launch. Um, this is going to be kind of degenerate because it's going to make Kaliuga on your opponent's turn. It can make Calamities in certain aspects and certain lists. Uh, Orcus is one of those decks that can actually make a Calamities with it. But we don't have things like, um, whatchamacallit, we don't have Azathoth in the game, which is probably going to be the most broken target for this, if anything. And I think, I think it's fine. I think Kali Yuga is, is strong, but like, again, we're only really looking at Pendulums to be using that option. And even then, they're already running these 
these cards in the main deck they kind of don't want to run and i don't know how consistent it would be in the grand scheme of things and again this kind of it feels kind of weird for pendulum to want to make this play when they have other plays that they can go for you know we have zexel in the format and let's be honest zexel isn't doing too much either so i think overall bardish at the time being can come back is a strong card it's a strong deck um, well, by deck, I mean an engine. Um, we do have new Phantom Knight support coming out soon, which might accelerate the um, the hype for this card. I just don't think it's that strong in the current format. Again, the banlist could change this up. Um, the banlist could also just not change it up, and we'd have no change in the format, and Bardish is still a decent option. But again, this is not a tier 1 option. It's definitely still within the tier 2 category of things. Can some decks play to, to more advantage than others? Yeah. But is it going to be the most broken thing like we had before? No. The format was a little bit slower. Um, the Orcus format we had was one of the slower ones we've had. I don't know a lot of people are like, but what do you mean? The D1 games. They were a strong deck, but they had major weaknesses. A good timed Ash, a good timed Ogre, a good timed Artifact Lancey, a good timed DD Crow, a Skullmeister. There's a lot more outs than what we have now, where Emancipator is complete through like 42 hand traps and an Ibiru. They don't care. Outlet's the same thing, they don't really care about the hand traps because they'll set 4 and pass and be like, alright, go ahead, do something. And that's not something we had before. Um, again, I think this can come back. Um, I know people might disagree, and I would love to hear why, honestly. Why do you think, if anything, Bardish should not come back? I'm still in the wagon that he should come back to 3 because you either play 1 or none. Um, there's no real option to play 2 or 3. So just bring him back to 3, see what happens. If, if it really does break the format, which I don't think so, that's actually a good thing because... Then we have competition toward Emancipators and Eldritch, which is what we're kind of needing right now. That's kind of what we're lacking in the format. Some kind of indirect nerf to the decks, like I said Maxi in the prior video, or just direct competition by bringing back things like Harp Horror or Electromite or even Rusty Bardish even. But yeah guys, that's it for this video. Let me know down below what you guys think. I always love to hear it. And as always, take care, stay safe, and see you guys next time.